Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Tonight, I'm going to continue in the study of the book of Job, uh, picking up uh, with uh, chapter 28. Uh, if you have not seen the previous studies on this, I, I hope you will go back and watch it from the beginning. Uh, this book, I think, particularly, is very important to get it all in context. I've, I've kind of felt obligated each new episode to give a little synopsis of everything that's, that's happened before, uh, because if you don't understand the basics of what's really happened, it, you know, you can really come to the wrong conclusions. But I'm not going to do it again. I've, I've recapped it over and over again, and that's enough. Uh, but first, let me say this is uh, Friday, and it's the 13th of November. Friday the 13th, and there's a word, uh, trescadecophobia, and that means fear of the number 13. So uh, I hope you don't have fear of the number 13, fear of Friday the 13th. Uh, however, I'm, some people, they like to do bad things on Friday the 13th, and th this is a day that something really bad happened. And if you've been following the news today, you know what's happened in Paris with uh, the evil Islamists uh, killing a, a lot of innocent people. So uh, I, I hope everybody will pray for these, uh, these innocent victims and their families this time. All right, now let me go on and begin this study. Job chapter 28. I'm a KJV first, firstest. Uh, I like to read it in the KJV first, and if if I'm not really certain of the, I understand it perfectly. Then I, I think it sometimes is helpful to look at commentaries or uh, you know other translations. The one I use primarily is the Amplified version because I it, it's it's like reading a trans uh, a commentary built right into the verses. So I may be looking at the amplified part of the time, but let's look at the KJV first and see if it's clear. Uh, Job chapter 28. Oh, this is in the amplified here. Let me change it back to the KJV. The title, Job Tells of Earth's Treasures, is the title they gave this. Um, in the KJV, the verses are not, uh, um, the chapters are not titled. Uh, but uh, in the Amplified, it says, Job talks about the earth's treasures. Um, all right, so 28 verse 1, Surely there is a vein for the silver, that's V-E-I-N. Surely there is a vein for the silver and a place for gold where they find it. And that's not find, it's fine it. Iron is taken out of the earth, and brass is molten out of the stone. He setteth an end to darkness, and searcheth out all perfection, the stones of darkness and the shadow of death. The flood breaketh out from the inhabitant, even the waters forgotten of the foot. They are dried up, they are gone away from men. As for the earth, out of it cometh bread, and under it is turned up as it were fire. The stones of it are the place of sapphires, and it hath dust of gold. There is a path which no fowl, that's F-O-W-L, birds, there is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. The lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. He putteth forth his hand upon the rock. He overturneth the mountains by the roots. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks, and his eye seeth every precious thing. He bindeth the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? 
Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. The depth saith, it is not in me, and the sea saith, it is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the, the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, uh, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then comest wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heaven to make the weight for the winds, and he weigheth the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the rain and a, and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then did he see it and declare it. He, prepare, he prepared it, yea, and searched it out. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil. Is understanding. That's. Uh, I find that especially interesting uh, right now because if you've been following my nightly broadcasts uh, for the last month or so, you you know that um, not only am I doing it nightly, but I am alternating topics uh, tonight. I'm continuing in the study of Job. Um, last night, I did study the topic of early church history. Uh, tomorrow night, I expect I'll do the book of Proverbs. The following night, I'll do the Gospel of John. So these four books or topics, uh, I'm kind of alternating. We spent a lot of time studying the book of Proverbs, which is uh, really could be called the book of wisdom. Uh, and, and now here in the book of Job, he's also talking about wisdom in this chapter. Uh, but in the, in the Amplified, um, he gives it, they give it a title that we don't see in the KJV. They title it, um, Job Tells of Earth's Treasures. Now, it's interesting that he goes off on this now because for the last, um, I don't know how many chapters, maybe 10 chapters, um, uh, one entire chapter is a tirade, or a diatribe, a long speech made against Job by one of his three visitors who are supposed to be his friends, but really are, you know, they're just to tear him down and accuse him and condemn him. Uh, so one of these will make a speech against Job. In the following chapter, Job answers them and d defends himself. And that's gone back and forth be between Job and his visitors now for many chapters. And now uh, suddenly Job starts making a speech about the earth and its treasures. So uh, it's interesting how that uh, that part of the story has seemed to stop and he's moved on. I don't recall if he's going to come back and talk to his so-called friends any further uh, at some point. But I'm going to look at this now verse by verse, but I want to look at it in the Amplified because it's, it's kind of like looking at a commentary. Uh Verse tw tw chapter 28, verse 1 says, Surely there is a mine for silver and a place where they refine gold. Iron is taken out of the earth and copper is smelted from the stone ore. 
So, you know, he's talking about the precious uh, minerals and stones and gems here that uh, that the earth has in it that we can we can take out of the earth. He said the title is Job tells of earth's treasures. And in verse three, man puts an end to darkness by bringing in a light. And to the farthest bounds, he searches out the rock buried in gloom and deep shadow. Uh, maybe he's talking about going down into a mining uh, uh, mining shaft deep, deep into the earth. And man brings a light in there searching for these treasures. Uh, verse 4, he breaks open uh, mine shafts. Yes, okay. He breaks open mine shafts far away from where people live in places forgotten by the human foot. They dangle in the mines and hang away from men. So he's, he's talking about the, the treasures that the earth holds and man's, the extent that man goes to, the effort man will make to take these treasures out of the earth. Uh, as for the earth, out of it comes food, but underneath it, its surface down deep, it is turned over as fire. Well, I mean, I guess we could say that he he knows about this fire down deep in the earth. Perhaps he's seen a volcano. Uh, I don't know exactly where Job's land is. I don't know. I didn't take the time to try to dig into that and find out. I'm assuming he's somewhere in the Middle East uh, over where uh, everybody else is, uh, you know, uh, Adam and Eve and Noah and Abraham, and Isaac, Jacob, uh, you know, the, and Moses, all, all these characters that we've been studying here um, that we find through all the Old Testament writings, uh, it, this all takes place there in the Middle East, various places around around Israel. So I'm assuming that Job probably is from that same area. Uh, and I don't know if there's any volcanoes in that area or not. But or, or it could be another example. We find this over and over again in the scriptures. Many examples of uh, truths that are they're scientific truths that are stated in the Bible, like this one. There's fire down underneath the ground in the earth, fire. Uh, unless he's seen a volcano and, and, and deduced that the, there's fire inside the earth and it came out in the form of a volcano. Unless he's seen that, how would he know there's fire down deep in the earth? Unless it's a revelation from God that he has and he's written it down. We see many of these in the scriptures. Rather than trying to list them for you now, uh, watch my playlist, Science, God, and the Bible. Uh, and uh, one particular video, there, I have over 100 videos on that playlist, I think, that are convincing of the, the scientific uh, science in the Bible and the uh, also the uh, uh, you know prophecies in the Bible. Uh, hey, let me see. i got to get Neo turned on here. How do I do that now? Oh, show, show and broadcast. There you go. There you go. What's yeah. up, brother? No interruption. Keep going. I was listening to you for a second. Oh, okay. I, uh, brother Bill, uh, taught me how to set these hangups up now so that someone, when they join, they are not initially visible. And, and if, if they're a stranger to me and I, I'm not sure of their basic doctrines, then I, I, I can, uh, quick uh, query them before I allow them on. And if it's someone like you that I already know and you're acceptable, uh, then then I can just click right on you and you can participate. How are you doing tonight? Oh, okay. You're just going to Oh, listen. yeah. No, I'm here. Sorry. It took me a second. Sorry. I've got 80, you know, I, <laughs> it takes me a second to get to my microphone. Oh, um, no, everything's great, man. I'm glad I'm here because I got out of a couple other rooms I didn't want to be in again, you know. Controversial subjects about, you know, how does God know things? Of course, my argument with Molinism against that stuff. But uh, 
I don't know, man. I, I, I got some questions later on whenever you get to the end of uh, this Bible study because a couple of these scriptures came up when I was um, talking to some people recently. All right. Uh, you know, I, I have a, a series of videos called Q&A where people ask me questions and I, and I answer the questions in a video format. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I feel like, you know, I do have a responsibility to try to answer any questions that people have of me, but, but sometimes I just have to admit, I don't have all the answers, but I will do the best I can after this is over, if you like. Uh, but as I'm reading Job chapter 28, I read it in the KJV. Now I'm going through it in the Amplified a little more slowly, but it's talking about the treasures that are in the earth and man's efforts to get the treasures out, gold and silver and bronze and precious gems and how we go deep down into the earth and, and mine these treasures out. And that uh, and Job makes a statement that underneath the earth is, inside the earth is fire. And I was speculating on how does Job know that? Uh, if he lives in the Middle East or where all the other Bible characters are from, I don't know of volcanoes in that area. Uh, may, maybe he has seen a volcano and deduced that uh, fire came out of the earth. There must be fire inside the earth. Uh, but if he didn't know that, if he hadn't had that experience, how would he know? Perhaps it was a revelation from God. That God uh, showed him that. Uh, but I was referring people to my playlist, Science, God, and the Bible, because I have about 100 videos on that playlist they give scientific proofs uh, showing you that the Bible is scientific and correct. And uh, I have a one video on that playlist that I made called Prove it, uh, Proving the Bible is True. So um, there's many examples like that that we can cite, but I don't want to get sidetracked into that subject tonight. So go to that playlist if you want more of these. But I'm just saying that in this case, right here, Job 28, Verse 5, it says, As for the earth, out of it comes food, but underneath its surface, down deep, it is turned over as fire. Um, now I'll move on to verse 6, and it says, Its stones are the bed of sapphires. It holds dust of gold. The path deep within, no bird of prey knows, and the falcon's eye has not caught sight of it. The proud beasts and their young have not walked on it, uh, nor has the fierce lion passed over it. Um, and I think this is referring back to this uh, underneath the surface. Uh, the path deep within. The path deep within. It's like the birds, they don't know what's inside the earth. It's what I'm, I'm gathering from this. Uh, they can only see what's on the surface. Uh, but it says, uh, verse 9, man puts his hand on and tears apart the flinty rock. He overturns the mountains at the base looking for treasure. He cuts out channels and passages among the rocks, and his eye sees every precious thing. Man dams up the streams from flowing so that they do not trickle into the mine. And what is hidden, he brings out to the light. I... Uh, you know, I've read Job several times over the years. I've never really tried to study Job as, as I'm doing here in this study, where I'm really trying to take the time to figure it all out and and explain it. And so some of these things really are kind of surprising to me, some of the things that are in it that I don't recall. Uh, one of the things that really stood out to me in a, uh, many chapters ago was this statement by Job that, God, God has taken all of his sins and put them in, in a bag and sewn it shut. Uh, that, to me, maybe I, when I read it years ago, that, you know, it just wasn't that significant to me. But, but now that, that kind of a statement is profound. And uh, I didn't realize that was in, in Job. Uh, and now this idea of this talking about all the mining, all the efforts that man does, tampering with the earth, digging down and, and searching and altering the earth with dams and, and then digging in 
pulling out the treasures out of the earth. That's really interesting. I just don't recall this particular part of the story. Uh, Brother Neil, do you want to say anything about any of this? Yeah, the whole stones thing. That's pretty awesome. Um, I was looking up a couple of commentaries earlier. I think it was like last week on this. Because I, I was studying job a while back. And uh, some people have some problems with what it says. And they just can't understand, you know, maybe some non-believers. And I try to explain to them that um, a lot of things would, in, in Job's time, Job, I say Job, sorry, in his time, uh, was very different to the way we live now and everything he was going through it's hard it's hard to explain because um, we know what the the whole everything that was going on with like the Holy Ghost um, uh, what was it just a bunch of random things that happened to him and it happened around uh, his life that was like a whole like somebody's lifetime shrunk down into one book, like Job's book. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty awesome to see everything that goes on with Job. Job, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've always heard it pronounced as Job. I'm only saying Job because that's the way I've heard it. I don't have any way of, uh, you know, proving that that's the correct way of pronouncing it. But, you know, Shouldn't bother anybody. If you want to say he's, his name is Job, uh, it doesn't bother me. Some people who are really dogmatic about every little fine detail might be angry with you if you call him Job. <laughs> Seem like our brethren, uh, they're, they're quick to find any, any little reason to criticize each other. Were you going to say something? Yeah, on job six, that's pretty awesome. I mean, 28 six, is that where you're at? Uh, was pretty cool when I started to hear about, you know, these uh, stones are in the place of sapphires and it has dust of gold. It, it's kind of, it sounds like, you know, and it, uh, like, like uh, you know, rich, you know. It, it's, talking about what God does is pretty awesome. All right, let me go on, and uh, now I'm all the way down to uh, 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 verse, I finished verse 11. Now, in the Amplified, it not only has a chap a title for the chapter, but it has subtitles within the chapter. And I've said this quite a few times lately, but you know, I know that some people don't watch my uh, a, a, an entire study from, from the first uh, chapter to the present, and they, they're kind of getting things out of context. So I think this is worth repeating. But when uh, the book of Job was first written down, and I'm not sure who wrote it, uh, but any of the books in the Bible, when they were first written down, that's called the original. And I, I don't think anybody believes that we actually have the original manuscripts what we have are copies of the original, and uh, most of them, they're, they're copies of copies of copies. There are several generations from the original. Yeah. And, and when we look at uh, the, the manuscripts we have, uh, none of them have titles for the books, uh, uh, titles for the chapters, uh, numbers for the chapters, numbers for the verses, they don't even have punctuation and capitalization. And all of these things uh, have been inserted by translators and publishers over the years. And so the, when we see these things, we have to be careful not to take them. And, and sometimes even footnotes, like in the Schofield uh, reference Bible that became very popular, a lot of people made the big mistake of looking at Schofield's notes at the bottom or in the margins and just taking his words in, in terms of his way of interpreting scriptures and they took that almost as scripture and we've got to just realize that uh, uh, you know when we see a title like this title here it's a subtitle before verse 12 it says the search for wisdom is harder now 
the, the writer here, the publisher, the translator or something, they, when they read this portion, they say that's the basic subject of the next few verses. And maybe they're right. But, but that is not that statement, this search for wisdom is harder, that is not the scripture. And we've got to always be on guard and not, not just be so gullible that any time someone writes a note or a comment or something uh, like a title, that we don't automatically accept it as, as, like, as the way we would accept the scriptures themselves. So here the subtitle for this next portion is, The Search for Wisdom is Harder. And it says in verse 12, uh, But where can wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man does not know the value of it, nor is it found in the land of the living. The deep says, it is not in me, and the sea says, it is not with me. It cannot be obtained for pure gold, nor can silver be weighed as its price. It cannot be valued in terms of the gold of Ophir in the precious onyx or beryl or the sapphire. Gold and glass cannot equal wisdom, nor can be it be exchanged for articles of fine gold. Well, I don't know, maybe I'm... Making a leap here. Oh, Ray's here with us, huh? Hey, Ray, let me turn you on here. I think I, I should be turning on your um, your mic, accessing you, Ray, if you're listening. I don't see why why it's not. Okay, there it is. Show and broadcast. Okay. Yeah, Ray, uh, feel free to unmute your mic if you feel like saying something. But, uh, Brother Neil, you've you heard me reading about that and. Uh, uh, it's talking about wisdom now, and I said earlier before you joined me that uh, you know I'm alternating topics in these nightly studies, and uh, uh, tomorrow night happens to be the night I'm going to be continuing the study of the Book of Proverbs, and of course the Book of Proverbs is all about wisdom. So now coincidentally, it's you know here in Job chapter 28 he introduces the topic of wisdom into our study, and. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, they all tie in together, all the books. Somehow they end with something that's chronologically ordered to the best of our knowledge. Uh, I believe I heard one of a biblical historian talk about how the book of Jonah is one of the first Old Testament books that we've ever discovered. Believe it or not, the book of Jonah is, is a lot older than most of the other books in the Old Testament. So they've, they've actually done research on that. Uh, I believe the guy's name is called Michael Ramsden. He works with with Ravi Zacharias. Uh, he's pretty esteemed. He's pretty smart. He knows what he's talking about. But, um, yeah, I love how everything is so ordered in the Bible. Like you've got Job ending with talking about knowledge. And if I had a highlighter... I would highlight the entire, almost the entire book of Proverbs. I love Proverbs. Proverbs are, is probably the most awesome book in the Bible. If you're looking for something in your life, maybe it can answer your question. It's like an ancient Chinese secret proverb thing. You know what I'm saying? You go in there and you're like, wow, that's exactly what I was talking about today. Something in Proverbs can tell you about almost anything. I mean, like, example, there could be, uh, Proverbs 1, I think, well, how many is there? Like 111 or something? I don't know. Proverbs. It was, uh, yeah, Proverbs, no, 11, yeah, 111, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, you know. Well, yeah, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom or understanding is, uh, is a group point that's repeated and Job actually says this in this chapter too. A good understanding yep, is all is uh, to have all the commandments he prays that endureth forever. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that stands out to me, uh, the, the portion we just read, is when, when Job's talking about how valuable and rare wisdom is, you can't, it's not found in the deep, you can't find it in the sea, you, you can't be obtained with gold or silver or precious gems, um, uh, 
you can't exchange it for uh, articles of gold. Uh, so he's saying that um, it, it's very precious, it's hard to find, but uh, and it can't be bought. But I'm thinking, it made me think about salvation in the respect that it's, it's also cannot be bought. And that's the something, of course, that is most dear to my heart is the subject of salvation. And, and no matter what book I study, no matter what topic we discuss, um, it, it, the, the subject of salvation always has to come up because everything else is moot compared to salvation. And so when I read this, I look at everything through this lens of of, uh, of the gospel, and I see that way of saying this is like this is like salvation. You know, uh, we can't buy it, we can't work for it, we can't earn it. It's a free gift. All we have to do is be wise enough to want it, and and seek it. Jesus says, "Seek and you will find." If you want to, if you're watching this now and you're seeking salvation, you want to know how. You're at the right place because tonight we're going to tell you. Uh, as I said, no matter what subject we're discussing, before the night is over, we end up telling you this, what the Apostle Paul said in his letter to Timothy, wisdom unto salvation. It doesn't matter if you had all kinds of wisdom, but you, if you did, did, did never attain the wisdom unto salvation, then uh, it's just all temporal. It's all, as, uh, as Solomon also said in Ecclesiastes, it's all vanity. Uh, let me ask Brother uh, Ray. He hasn't said anything yet. Uh, would you like to talk about anything we've said, Ray? i got to unmute my mic. <laughs> yeah, um, that's pretty good. Can you guys understand me okay? Uh, okay. Yeah, your audio is very clear right now, Ray. Oh, that's good, yeah. I've got the camera on. I, have, I don't know if it's working or not. Let's see how we go. Um, yeah. This, like I've been talking to a lot of people lately about, um, I witness a lot, and um, what I've been finding out, people do not understand what Jesus is all about. They, they just will not have a clue. They think the, um, the Bible is foolish. They, but after a while, when I start to tell them what the Bible is really all about and what Jesus is really all about, they start to understand. They, they start to understand what I'm, what I'm saying. And... Uh, the, the Bible is a link to our spirit, our relationship between ourselves and God. And we only have um, uh, a relationship to God through Jesus Christ. Uh, there's no other way to, to talk to God. If uh, we didn't talk to, talk to God through Jesus Christ, we wouldn't be able to talk to him. But um, I know... Um, I know that God, um, they, they think God's, a, God's this lovey-dovey God. He's not really. God's a, all of God's law, laws are sovereign. Um, he had the laws before the earth was created. And uh, the Ten Commandments are his laws. And um, there are only two laws, really. Love God with all your heart and love one another as I have loved you. They sum up the Ten Commandments. Um, the whole 613 uh, laws that were in the old Torah, Torah, um, just love God and love one another and that's all God wants us to do um, God applauds violence um, uh, throughout the earth at the moment you see wars and you know, people see people are fighting and you see violence like you wouldn't believe I end the violence I suppose but, um, but the whole earth is full with violence at the moment but um, so um, Jesus will not come back in, a, in an environment like that with this too much with this violence like this. So, um, anyhow, I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking now because otherwise I'll ramble on for hours. But, uh, yeah. All right, then. Uh, I guess, Neil, I don't know what happened. He's gone now, but let me move on. And let me see. Now I'm at uh, verse, uh, chapter 28, verse, uh, um, verse 20. From where... Then does wisdom come, and where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all the living and concealed from the birds of the heavens. Abaddon, the place of destruction and death, say, we have only heard a report of it with our ears. God understands the way to wisdom, and he knows its place, for wisdom is with God alone. 
for he looks at the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. Uh, when he gave weight and pressure to the wind and allotted the waters by measure, when he made a limit for the rain and a way for the thunderbolt, then he saw wisdom and declared it. He established it and searched it out. But to man, he said, behold, the reverential and worshipful fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So uh, that's the reference that Brother Neo was talking about earlier. He said, the fear of God is the, the beginning of wisdom. We find that statement mentioned numerous times in the book of Proverbs that we're also studying. And now we see it at the end of this chapter 28 in, in, in Job. And uh, the fear of God is not the fear in terms of, uh, oh, I'm, I'm afraid, uh, like that kind of a fear. It's awe, reverence, respect. Uh, and uh, uh, if, if you revere God and you desire God, uh, that is the beginning of wisdom because you desire a relationship with God. And as uh, Brother Ray said, this relationship with God only comes through our faith in Jesus, who is our Savior God. Um, and then it says the, the final statement there is, uh, uh, and to depart from evil is understanding. Um, departing from evil is something that uh, we should all desire to do. Departing from evil, uh, it, the problem is that people, most people, in the world today, most people throughout all of history have believed that the way you go to heaven is departing from evil. You stop doing bad things, you do a lot of good things, and then you become acceptable to God and he lets you into heaven, but uh, that's not God's way. Uh, the, the way to heaven is by putting your faith in Jesus. We cannot buy our way into heaven or bribe our way into heaven or work our way into heaven with all these good deeds or abstaining from evil. Uh, salvation and eternal life in heaven is a free gift because of our faith in Jesus. But it does tell us to depart from evil. That's, that's understanding. We should do everything we can to avoid doing evil. Uh, because it's wise, we're going to we're going to have a better life. People around us will have better lives if we're not doing evil. If we're doing good instead, uh, but the confusion in the world has as they relate departing from evil and doing good. They think that's the formula to get into heaven, and that's the big mistake that people are making. Before I go on, Brother Ray, what do you say about all that? Hey, half the Ten Commandments and so on the second part is love one another as I have loved you Put love one another as Jesus loved them right. hey brother uh, brother your uh, brother can you hear me can you hear me your audio is totally gone now yeah. why don't you why don't you leave and come back maybe it'll maybe if you leave and come back it'll work again but right now we can't understand anything you're saying okay all right. Okay. All right. All right. Now I'm going to go on to the next chapter. I will. I'll look at it in the uh, KJV first. Chapter 29 in the KJV. My go. Mm. Now, brother, uh, your uh, your audio is not working. You're going to have to leave leave the broadcast and then sign back in and try that. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to read again. I'm going to read in the KJV ver chapter 29 now. Let's see if we have time to get through that at least. Uh, he says, moreover, Job continued his parable and said. Uh, oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me, when his candle shined upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me. 
when I washed my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil, when I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street. The young men saw me and hid themselves, and the aged rose and stood up. The princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace, and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the, when the ear heard me, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw me, it gave me to witness. It gave witness to me, because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind, and, and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not I searched out. And I break the jaws of the wicked and pluck the spoil out of his teeth. Then I said, I shall die in my nest and I shall multiply my days as the sand. My root was spread out by the waters and the dew lay all night upon my branch. My glory was fresh in me and my bow, my bow was renewed in my hand. Unto me, men gave ear and waited and kept silence at my counsel. After my words, they spake not again, and my speech dropped upon them. And they waited for me as the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. If I laughed on them, they believed it not, and the light of my countenance they cast not down. I chose out their way and sat chief, and dwelt as a king in the army, as one that comforteth the mourners. Hmm. That's, uh, he's very reflective on his life before his troubles. You know, what, what's happened to him is uh, he, he was blessed so much with wealth, a large family, uh, health, everything was wonderful in his life until all of these troubles fell upon him that were caused by Satan, not by God. Um, the, th the critical thing for everybody to understand about Job's ordeal is that in the first two chapters, we learn that uh, Satan said he's roamed the earth and there's nobody, that, no one man that loves God. And God said, well, I've considered my servant Job. He's righteous. He loves me. And Satan says, well, you think he loves you, but it's only because you blessed him. He has so much. If we t you let me take away what he has, he will curse you. He and hate not love you. Uh, so God says, allow Satan to do that. So the first thing, Job loses his family. They're killed. He loses his all of his wealth and properties. He then he loses his health. He gets very sick and horribly sick and suffering physical. Uh, and, uh, and so all these things are taken away, and now Job looks back before and is reflecting how his life was before. He thinks God has deserted him. Over many chapters, his so-called friends were visiting, and they're blaming Job for his problem, saying, you deserve it because you've, you're evil, you've done all these bad things. And Job continues defending himself. And right here, he's saying, I did all these things for widows. I did all these good things. And he, he didn't do anything. And even if we read the first two chapters, we, we must agree that Job is not getting what he deserves. It, he's not being punished by God because of his uh, uh, you know, bad behavior and his wickedness. Uh, so Job's looking back and saying, look, my life was so good. People respected me, admired me. Uh, you know, I was, and I had everything. And now he doesn't. Okay, raise on twice here. Let me see if I can get him showing the broadcast. Okay, you should be able to talk. Let's see if your if your microphone's working correctly now. Right?
I've turned it on. You should be able to talk. Hmm, it's not working. Maybe it's because you have two things. There you go. Try the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now you should be able to go, Ray. Ray. All right. Uh, okay, we're getting near the end. So I read this chapter 29 in the KJV, and the next I want to go through it more slowly in the Amplified, but I don't won't have time to finish that tonight. So I'm going to uh, do a, a uh, do an invitation for salvation here, as I, I close every broadcast with with that same message. Uh, let me see if your auto is working, right? No, it's not. To, to talk, it's. It, I'll tell you if it sounds good. Uh, it's it's not working, brother. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me just. I'll just mute you. Okay. All right. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, when we were talking about wisdom, uh, uh, it would do you no good if you if you gained wisdom under understanding about everything in the world, and yet you never gained wisdom unto salvation, and that is. Uh, understanding what is required of you so that you can go to heaven. Uh, almost everybody in the world today and almost everybody throughout history uh, has it wrong. Uh, it says in Romans 10, 3, that man is trying to establish their own righteousness as a means of getting to heaven. They depart from evil, try to get control over their sin and stop sinning, and then they give to charities and do good things. And they think that if they can become righteous enough, if they're good enough, God will accept them into heaven. But the Bible says that's not God's way. That's man's way. That's just a philosophy, but it's not God's way for people to go to heaven. So if that's not the way to get into heaven, what is the way? The Bible says that Jesus is the way. He's the one and only way. And so what you need to do if you do want to go to heaven is you must uh, give up trying to get there through your own efforts and, ex and, and just accept the fact that it's impossible. Jesus said, with man, it is impossible. Salvation on your own is impossible. So just give up on that. And instead, say, I need someone to save me. And the Bible says Jesus is the one and only Savior. He is Savior God. So now instead of believing in yourself and your own ability to earn heaven, now change your mind and believe in Jesus instead. Put your faith in Jesus. And that means you believe uh, in his ability to get you to heaven. You believe in his faithfulness. That means that he, he keeps his promises. He, he, will, he will actually get you into heaven. It's guaranteed. Uh, believe on Jesus. That means that you are going to depend on him completely. You're going to rely on him instead of thinking that you can get there through your own efforts. So put your faith in Jesus. He is God. He became a man. He died on a cross and paid for all our sins. And then on the third day, he raised himself from the dead. And that resurrection is the sign that proves to us that he is God and he does have power over life and death. Because of the resurrection, I have confidence that my faith in Jesus is justified. Will you put your faith in Jesus? Will you put your faith in him now? If you do, make a comment on this video. I'd love to, to know about it. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to end the broadcast for tonight, but I hope you will join me nightly, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, as I said, the topics are alternating between Job, Proverbs, the Gospel of John, and the subject of early church history. All right, I'll let you see if you can say good night, uh, Brother Ray, but I don't. your audio doesn't sound good. Go, let me see how it sounds. Hey, what? I'm not we're not going? Nope. No. Nah, I'm sorry. <laughs> nice try, brother. Okay. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm.